Hello everyone, I am Benjamin, music composer for The Music Factory, and today we're going to talk about how you can get started making music on your PC at home today. So the first thing we have to talk about when we talk about making music is you only really need your brain. If you want to make music, just imagine what music you want to make. That's you making music in your head. But let's take it a little bit further and talk about how we can get into the digital age of making music on your computer at home. You really only need about three main components. A decent working computer with about 8 gigs of RAM or so. You're going to need a digital audio workspace, a DAW. And you're going to need, potentially, a MIDI keyboard. The fourth thing is sort of an optional thing, but for a lot of people who take music seriously, we'll talk about that later. Depending on how serious you want to take music composing, you're going to need either a really high-end computer or even just a basic laptop would actually do the trick. But again, it's going to depend on how much you want to invest or how much you can invest in making music at home. For example, the computer that I use in the office has 64 gigabytes of RAM, a GTX 1070 GPU, a Core i7 7th Gen processor, and I also have a fancy 88 key Artoria key lab. And wow, that thing is a beast. For software, I'm using PreSonus Studio One Professional 3, and I also have dozens and dozens of music libraries that we've acquired over the many months and actually many years that I've been writing music. But in all honesty, you can really get started making music with far less requirements. In fact, when I actually started to get back into composing for digital music a few years ago, I only had a 2008 all-in-one Dell PC. That thing was ancient, but I was able to make music like this. It's actually not bad considering the age of the computer. So ultimately, making music is going to come down to two factors. Your ability to make music, in other words, you know, how well you make music in your head and how well you can translate that to your computer. So your ability to use your equipment is also going to be important. You can have all the fanciest equipment in the world, but if you don't know how to use it and you don't have the skill to use it, you're simply not going to make good music. So it doesn't really matter that much of what equipment you have if you don't know how to use it. So maybe you're starting out like I did a few years ago and you're thinking, what is the lowest tier equipment that I can use to get started? Well, first of all, if you already have a computer, that's it. You're set. You can get started today. Even if it's an old computer, you can probably start making music on it with very little issues. You will eventually run into things like a RAM cap and things like that, but you can still do a lot with basic computing. So then it comes down to software and keyboards. What software and keyboards would I recommend? Well, I would start by looking into the free DAWs, or digital audio workspaces, which is what's going to allow you to create the music on your computer. I use PreSona Studio One Professional, but Studio One also has a free version called Prime, which is great for someone who's just starting out. It has a non-expiring license, it's not a demo. There is a demo version that has the ultimate upgrades to it. You can get the lower end starter package absolutely free from PreSonus and then upgrade as you're able to. If you're a Mac user, you also have GarageBand, which comes free with Macs. Pro Tools, which was originally designed around Mac computers, is also available on Windows. And there's also a free version of Pro Tools called Pro Tools First. Traction is also another popular DAW, which you can find in the description below. All of these, by the way, are linked in the description. So what about keyboards? Well, if you like the lowest tier option, your QWERTY keyboard. The QWERTY keyboard allows you to use the QWERTY keys and the 23567 keys as a MIDI input device. It's actually not bad if you really are down to just, this is what I have to use, but it doesn't really have that, that same tactile feel that you get from an actual keyboard or a piano, for instance. So it can be a bit limiting in terms of just how it feels. So I would really recommend getting the step up and getting something external. And I would start, if you're really looking for a low tier and you're looking to gamble, <laughs> Go ahead and get you a World E Panda 25 keyboard. These are Chinese, very, very cheap MIDI keyboards that some say work great and some just ship dead or broken. So it is a gamble. You are gambling your money when you buy one of these. But 
you can always, if you go through Amazon Prime or anything like that, you can of course get it replaced. Well, what other options are there? If you want to go even lower tier, there's also the option of getting an old keyboard from your garage or something like that that has those big clunky MIDI input outputs on the back, and then buying one of these, a MIDI to USB adapter. This allows you to turn your old sort of Walmart or Casio keyboard into a MIDI input device for your doll which I actually did this when I started out again a few years ago composing on my old school Dell all-in-one computer. Wow, I had quite the setup. And let me tell you, it was a fun experience. But let's say you want to go up a step. Let's say you want to get something a little better, something that has mod wheels and faders and knobs and track controls and all this other cool stuff. Well, I would suggest going the step up and getting the Arturia Keylab 25, which they don't actually make anymore, but are still available on the market from a lot of stores. And there's actually a lot of keyboards that are around the same price. There's Akai makes the uh, professional, Akai, is that how you pronounce it? Uh, M Audio makes a lot of good keyboards. Behringer makes some decent keyboards. There's also really cheap, even smaller keyboards that are just keys and nothing else. If you want to go that route, go for it. One last thing that I'm not going to talk about too much on this list is going to be music uh, sound libraries. And that's because sound libraries tend to be, well, they tend to be very expensive. So what I would recommend is if you're looking for a great starter pack sound library that has everything you could possibly want, EWQL offers what they call the Composer Cloud, which I think starts around $20 a month. You can have a computer, a MIDI keyboard, Composer Cloud, and some decent headphones. You don't even need to get reference headphones. You can use, you know, basic stereo headphones to get started. You can be making music within a matter of days, just from a couple of hundred dollars or less. And I mean making professional, excellent sounding music without really breaking the bank. There is one more thing that I didn't really talk about today either, and that is if you want to go that next step and get the studio headphones or the studio speakers, I would suggest, if you're going to start out lower end, the Samson SR850 open back headphones. These are actually headphones that I am still using today. They are only $32.80 on Amazon right now, and they are Amazon Choice have a 5 star rating and they are good headphones. I still use them today. They are excellent headphones. They're not perfect, they're not high end, they're not the best headphones money can buy, but wow, for the price point and everything else, these headphones are fantastic. I have had no issues with them. They're high quality build. I, I, I don't know how <laughs> at that price you can get headphones for that cheap, but you can. And I will leave a link to everything I talked about today down in the description. I really hope this encourages some of you out there who are really interested in getting started making music and just feel like there's just something in the way that you just, like, oh, I don't have a professional studio or I don't have this or that. You can do it. I did it. You can do it too. Go down in the description, check out all those links. Not sponsored. But anyway, that's really all the time I had for today. I'm Ben, music composer for The Music Factory, and if you like this video, Give it a like, click that eye up there to go to our Facebook page, click the big MF logo to subscribe to our channel, and you can watch our most recent vlog video right here. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you next time.